Hi everyone, my name is Douglas Hanna. Um, I'm the CEO of a web hosting company called A Small Orange. And I guess first I want to start by asking some questions about the audience. Uh, who here uses Facebook? Okay, most. Twitter? Google Plus? Oh, it's a lot of early adopters. What about a small orange? Any customers? Great. Awesome. Um, so I, I want to start off by kind of talking about what makes blogging different from a traditional business. Because the point of this talk is to talk about what about blogging is similar to business and how you can kind of apply some of those business principles to blogging. So my background is in customer service. I've kind of worked in an industry that needs customer service to set itself apart. So I'm going to try and make it so you guys can take some of the principles that we've learned in our business and that other customer service providers have learned in their businesses uh, to go ahead and get and retain customers. So blogging is also is obviously a little bit more niche. If you had a magazine, it would be on real estate with like 100 million ones. But if you were a blog, you might blog about St. Charles real estate. This is the a long tail, the Chris Anderson book. It's kind of boring. You can look at this graph and it will tell you everything you need to know. Save yourself 300 pages. Um, this is this is comment. This, these are comments on our blogs. We ran a contest pretty recently. You have interactivity with blogs that you don't have with newspapers and kind of more traditional media. And then another thing is that blogging is fast. Uh, maybe not Ferrari fast, I guess it depends on how quick you are with your computer, but it's definitely quicker than your once daily, your once monthly, or your once quarterly publication that you'd see. So that, that's kind of what makes blogging itself and what makes blogging different. If you think about it and you step back, what, these are kind of those three traits, personalized, personal, and then speed. So if you think about businesses, what businesses do and don't have these sorts of things? Do you think Walmart is specialized, personalized, or speed or, or adaptable? Whatever you think about Walmart, it's probably not those things because that's not their model. Um, your local business, whatever local, the village store and cafe from Google Images probably is these things or hopefully is these things. It's definitely going to be a lot more specialized than some mega big box store. It's going to have more personal interaction because there's probably three people that work there instead of maybe 30 or 300. And then it's going to definitely be a lot more adaptable to what their customers want because if you walk in and you're like, I want X, Y, and Z, they can probably buy X, Y, and Z and have it for you next week instead of going through some large corporate purchasing program. So blogs are sort of like businesses and specifically small businesses because you have that personal relationship. TechCrunch or Mashable or any of those big blogs are going to be more like your big businesses. They're going to be less adaptable. They're going to be less personalized. They might still have the speed element, but they're definitely going to be less of the two or three. Um, but blogs, also like small businesses, maybe like my business, web hosting, are in highly competitive industries. So you need to do stuff to set yourself apart to attract and retain customers. Because blogging is not easy, just like business isn't easy. Um, I mainly put up this cartoon because I think it's funny. It's, it's, it's a popular one. It's been around for a couple of years. It says, on the internet, no one knows your dog. Um, and on, in the blogosphere, no one can know the size of your business necessarily. You can be as small or as big as you want to be. Um, but I want to start by going over a couple of business basics that will apply to blogging. So one is offer a product that people want. The contrast on a projector is kind of bad, but this is people lining up outside of an Apple store. So if people are going to line up to give you money, you're probably doing something right. And then continuing the Apple metaphor is you want to offer something at a price that people can afford and that you can profit from. I know Apple does the latter. The first one is probably a little bit more up to interpretation. They definitely offer things that are mass market and that can appeal to a lot of people. And then the final step, and the step that's going to be most relevant to this presentation, especially the second half of this, is attracting and retaining customers. So that, that's the goal of any business. In order to do the other things and to make money from it, you need to be able to attract and retain customers. If you can't do that, it doesn't matter how great your product is or what it is. So in a blog, your product is content. Um, it has to be good, otherwise no one's going to read your blog. It's like no one's going to buy anything from Apple if the products don't work well. Um, they, they might, but theoretically they wouldn't. Um, and then you have to make money from it. So that's, that's probably a different talk, that's a different session. And then what I'm going to talk about in this session is how to kind of roll out the red carpet for your readers who are your customers, which is where we get into treating your readers like customers. So there's a couple steps. I'm going to try and give some examples and some things that I've done and that I've seen other people do and do a good job. The first step, kind of like that, um, that form that the other speaker had before me, is that you need to understand yourself and what your goals are. So at Small Orange, we have a mission. It's service, not just servers. Um, and then we have a vision, which you can read here. 
But most importantly, I think we have values that are important to us, and you should try and come up with values for your own blog and your own mission. So what, what is your mission? Is your mission to provide lots of content and do it quickly and be on the breaking it or be on the bleeding edge of things or is your mission to do something a little bit more traditional and provide lots of long form content um, so the no, no one needs to write these down if you're not if unless you're curious about our six corporate values uh, one of which is badass I'd like to point out um, so that gets back to treating your readers like customers once you understand yourself then you can start helping your customers um, the first part of that I think in a good business practice is to survey your customers. And I'm going to use the words customers instead of readers here to kind of get you guys in the mindset of your readers are your customers. So there are a couple different surveys you can do. Um, with easy integration with WordPress, there's something called Poll Daddy. It's made by Automatic, which is the company behind WordPress.com. They have a WordPress plugin. It's really easy to launch in-depth surveys, quick questions. It integrates with Twitter as well. Um, and it, is, it makes it very simple. Um, to, to ask questions and to gather feedback from your customers. Um, a question that I've used kind of in my customer service background is this question. It's called a net promoter question. Uh, essentially, the Harvard MBA guy came up with this idea that this question, how likely are you to refer your, your company, your blog, whatever, to a friend or colleague is the ultimate question, which is the name of his book. And he said that this is more effective in terms of gauging customer loyalty than any other question. And that's what we were curious about. How loyal are your readers? How re loyal are your customers? And it's just how likely are you to refer, the, the ultimate net promoter question. The scoring is pretty easy. You do it on a 0 through 10 scale. People who rate you 9 to 10 are what's called promoters. So promoters are people who will actively engage with you and actively promote your, blog, your company or your blog to others. Passives are people who rank 7 or 8. They might deflect to something better. They're not really loyalists. And then 0 through 6 are what's called detractors. And to calculate the scores, you come up with the percent of promoters minus the percent of detractors, and passives don't really count. Um, there's a ton of literature on this online. It's, really, it's not terribly complicated. I'll post the, the slide on SlideShare. But once you get this, you'll get a score, 0 through 100. Um, usually a good actually can be negative, can be negative 100, I guess, theoretically. Um, so the score, a good score is 50, uh, a, a, a pretty, an okay score is 25, 30. It really depends on your industry and your business and kind of what you're going for. On a blog, you should hopefully be able to get pretty good scores because there's definitely no kind of lock-in with blogs, so it's really easy to go read a different blog. There's no, there's no investment to staying with one blog or another. It's not like you're changing internet companies or something like that. And then step two is to make your customers feel special. Roll out the VIP treatment for them. Um, one way that I've always done with my blog, and I've, I've been blogging about customer service for a couple of years, is I email customers and I let them know kind of um, and kind of, th I try and engage with them via email in addition to in the comments. So this is a fake email. I haven't sent this email before, um, but it kind of gives you an idea of if someone comments and they talk about mobile devices, you reach out to them and you give them more more information. It's kind of like the same thing you do if you meet someone at a party and you want to follow up with them. If they might be able to invest in your business or help you, you want to create a conversation with them and to really engage them. So this is an example of an email you could send. Um, there, there are obviously a million ways to do it and to send it. Um, and then a, a follow-up step to that is to encourage loyalty. And there are a couple ways to do this. With one WordPress plugin slash component that I like to use is called BuddyPress. Uh, BuddyPress allows you to build a social network on top of your, on top of your existing blogs. Um, it's, it's not terribly complicated to install. You can install it right from the plugins menu. And what it does is it gives you membership accounts, forums, groups, all these different things that you might see on a traditional social network. What's interesting about BuddyPress is if you have enough readers, and that's the important caveat there, you need to have enough readers, otherwise it's going to be the loneliest social network ever. Um, if, if this won't work on my blog. I might have 1,000 or 2,000 regular readers, but if 10% of them engage, it's not going to be enough to really have like a vibrant social community. So if you have a big blog and you're really looking to engage people with it, or a big audience, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big blog to start off with, this is a good way to really engage them. A simpler way, regardless of your audience size, is to have a contact form. There's a plugin called Contact Form 7, I think. Um, 
I don't know what happened to one through six, but seven is the current version, and it makes it really easy to just throw a content, a contact form or multiple contact forms up on any page of your choice, and that gives your readers a direct way to engage with you, and you don't have to post your, pers your private email if you don't want to, and you can filter it and do whatever you want. Another way to kind of encourage loyalty is to make it easy for people to be just that, loyal to your blog. On my blog, my customer service blog, I have a subscribe for free link uh, on the very top. And then I have a whole bunch of these homepage services and an email subscription link. And of course, RSS kind of, let's see, which point work? Oh, here it is. So you have subscribe for free with RSS here and subscribe via email here. Um, there are a whole bunch of ways to do subscriptions via email. There's a plugin called Subscribe2, the number two, uh, which is built into WordPress. Um, I use Feedblitz because when I started my blog, I don't think Subscribe2 existed, and I've just never switched. So uh, there are a whole bunch of ways to do that all in the WordPress plugin directory if this isn't working for you. And then the next step is once you have kind of customers that are coming to your blog, once you've successfully attracted them, then you want to engage them. And engaging them, there are a couple ways to do that. Um, a plugin that I really like uh, was actually created by one of the organizers here. Micho is called YARP, or that's the acronym. It stands for Yet Another Related Post Plugin. And I, I guess the backstory is that there are a whole bunch of re related post plugins, but I think his is the best. Um, it's really easy to install. Uh, Micho has a background in linguistics and a whole bunch of really complicated stuff that is probably more than you'd want to know about what comes up with a related post to your blog. Um, so it's simple, uh, you just install it, there are a couple theme things that you can drop in, a lot of themes are compatible with it, and again you can download YARP right from the, right from the WordPress plugin directory. And then another one that I have and that kind of gives people a starting point for your blog is something called featured posts. So featured posts are pretty simple. It's really just that I have a couple, uh, three featured posts that I just had a text widget in WordPress. So you go into your theme, you create a widget, and you create a text widget. I'm sure there are plugins. WordPress now has sticky posts, uh, which is kind of like a featured post, but really not set up for the format I have. And what it does is it gets people into your old content. So all these posts are like six months to a year old. They're not something that you would see if you just happened to come across my homepage because they would be 20, 10, 20 pages back or whatever it might be. Um, so featured posts are a good way to get people into your archives and then they can use Garp to kind of get into more posts and see really what's going on. And that will get people into your blog deeper and really getting them to stick around. And then something else that I've done and that I think has been really effective is engaging your fellow bloggers. A lot of, so I mentioned earlier that blogging is kind of a niche thing for a lot of people. I blog about customer service. There are about a dozen customer service bloggers who aren't completely spam or promotional or some big Fortune 500 company blogging about customer service. So what I did a couple years ago is I emailed a whole bunch of them that I had already been exchanging links with or that I had been doing stuff with, and I said, how about we create a Google group and we just figure out and, and we work with each other in network. And it was actually really effective. So this is a post that some guy sent um, to our group. And customer service bloggers might be nicer than your average group of bloggers, um, just by the nature of the beast. But I would imagine, and from what I've seen, most bloggers are pretty friendly. I think most people are willing to try and help each other out, um, in, including in the same industry. I, I have a hard time believing that like all the food bloggers are ultra competitive against each other and are really trying to take down each other. Our community was lucky enough to be very, to be very um, open to being supportive and helping out each other. So this guy sent a blog and post and he said, yeah, Doug had a great blog post and I want to encourage all of us to do this and that. And then he engaged another blogger here and then he wants someone else who I think was on vacation back. So this is a very friendly email. Probably you can tell written by a guy with a background in customer service. But more practically, you can send things if you want to do collaborations. I know the customer service blogging community has something called the customer service carnival, and every week someone else will host it, and it's just kind of what's been interesting in the, the community for the last week. Engaging your fellow bloggers is a really great way to do that. You'll build up a lot of thought leadership. You'll build up a lot of good karma. You'll get a lot of links. You'll definitely individually recruit people on this list to read your blog, but also really engage other people and, and come across as a leader in your space. And then another thing that you want to do is educate your customers. Because when you educate your customers, you build trust. Uh, so this guy, obviously, his voice is one of the most trusted voices in, in the country when, when he was uh, active. And if you can do that, 
um, you're going to really gain loyalty among your customers. I did consulting with Dell a couple of years ago, and, and their goal at the time was to become a trusted advisor to their consumers. So if you called, if you needed a computer, you had computing needs, you would call Dell and you would trust them to be to advise you on what the next steps for you were. So you you would have the trust that they would a be able to guide you in the right direction and b not try and rip you off. That's something that is really valuable to their consumers. I'm not sure how well it worked out for them, but it's something that. Is, is useful and is definitely a good goal. And if you can kind of get your readers to trust you and to be a trusted advisor to them and whatever your topic is, then they're going to come to you. They're going to come obviously back to your blog, but they might come to you with questions and with consulting inquiries and whatever else, whatever your goal for blogging might be. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is kind of quick action steps. Um, if you don't have RSS, comes with all WordPress blogs. As long as you haven't disabled it, it should be should be enabled and it's easy to do and that will allow people to easily read your blog. Make email subscriptions possible. Again, you can use Feedblitz or subscribe to. Find a blogging mentor. Um, it can be just someone else in your blogging community. You might be able to, maybe a mentor is not even the best word. It could be a peer, just someone to, that you're starting up with and that can really help you out as you're getting started. Um, and then you want to hold each other accountable. And then, of course, you want to read other blogs and participate. I think my, my number one advice to new bloggers, especially in smaller communities like customer service or food blogging or whatever, is to really engage with other bloggers. That way, they're going to start linking to you and they're going to start promoting your brand and your content instead of you just having to start and try and get an audience right off the bat. Um, so these are the, the six steps again, and I'm going to pretty much open it up for questions and answers. I want to keep this short and leave plenty of time for Q&A and maybe some discussion among the audience. Uh, so number one is survey your customers. Ask them that net promoter question. Ask them would they recommend your blog to a friend or colleague. If you have a high score, you're doing a good job. If not, you'll probably get some good comments and good feedback about what you can do. Um, you want to make your key customers feel special. Reach out to those people who are engaging with your community or are submitting guest posts or whatever they might be doing. You're going to want to reach out to them and ask um, what you can do to make them feel special. And then maybe if they give a feature request or a blog post request, definitely engage them with that. Do it and make it public that you're doing it. That way other customers know that um, if someone sends in a guest post idea or a topic idea, that you'll write about it and that will encourage them to do it. Uh, encourage loyalty. So you want to encourage your, your people to come, keep coming back. You want to have some sort of community. You want to foster that community. You want to engage your customers personally. So you want to reach out to them. You want to let them know that they're special. In addition to, and that's just generally, not only your specific key customers. You want to engage your bloggers through your community. Easy and hard to do, depends on your community and which, what you're blogging about, but probably easier than you think and really just takes initiative. And then you want to educate your customers because if you're educating your customers, they're going to trust you and they're going to keep coming back and you're going to be the first person they think of when they have a need for whatever that is, whether that's customer service consulting or web hosting. Uh, and then if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Douglas Hanna. I, I don't tweet too often, but feel free to follow me. I have a, a personal blog at DouglasHanna.com that kind of links off to my customer service blog in addition to uh, our company blogs. And then if you want web hosting, feel free to sign up. Um, but that's not what this topic's about, obviously. Um, and then otherwise, I'm just happy to open it up for questions. And If you have questions, raise your hand. I'll come to you with the microphone. Cool. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your company, a Small Orange? Sure. So Small Orange is a provider of shared reseller VPS dedicated web hosting. Uh, we specialize in kind of providing customer service in addition to the service, the servers and the products. And um, we're about 35 people. We're based in Durham, North Carolina, and we have an office in Atlanta. So we're we're. We're kind of a service business that happens to provide web hosting because web hosting is a commodity product, so you need to set yourself apart. That was not a promotional plug. I've never never met you before. <laughs> Any other questions? Cool. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, I'll be around if anyone has any questions or concerns after. Thanks.